talking about eyes a bit earlier and the way the pupil shuts down when the light hits the eye. Light comes on and that little black dot in the middle immediately closes down to let less light into the eye. At least that's the way it is with us, with human eyes. But for a lot of animals they don't have a circular pupil, they have a slit. And in cats you find the slit runs up and down and that's true also of things like the alligator, the crocodiles and the gecko which has a vertical slit, an up and down slit. But other animals like sheep, goats and horses have a pupil that runs across, a horizontal pupil. Well, that's a bit odd. Why do some have pupils that go up and down, others have them that go across, while we have circular pupils? Well, it's all to do with the way you use your eyes and what time of the day you mostly use them. But you see, we are daytime animals and our problem is mainly keeping enough light out of the eye. We normally have to have a small pupil. But cats go hunting at night, as I'm sure you've heard in the wee hours of the morning, these cats squabbling outside your, your window. And when it's very dark, you need a pupil that is very large. And so they basically start with a pupil that's that sort of size, a very big hole. Trouble is, when they start running around in the daytime, that hole has to get a lot smaller. And if you do what the humans do and have a circular pupil, you can imagine what happens. This is a marble bag, but if I pull the string, you'll see what's going to happen to that pupil. It gets small, but it gets extremely wrinkled. And so the cat would be looking through something like that and get a terrible picture. So the cat solves it by having a large pupil in the night time, and that's the one we started with, but when it has to shut it down, it doesn't make it circular, it makes it slit-like. It can pull it like this, and the pupil can shut down to let through very little light, but it doesn't wrinkle. And in cats, it runs like that, and in sheep and goats, it runs like that. And there's a reason for that too. Well, let's first of all, before we look at that, let's make some models. A pinhole camera is, well, you can make a good one out of a tin, knock a hole in the middle of it with something like a nail, right in the middle, and at the other end, stretch lunch wrap paper over it to make a screen. And it's too bright, in fact, to see any image on that, unless you take a tube of cardboard, wrap it around the tin, secure it with a rubber band, look at a bright light and squeeze through the cardboard tube. Well, we've got a bright light which in fact has one of these things in front of it. It's an arrow cut out of cardboard and it's pointing downwards. We've put that in front of a light and if I look at it through this pinhole camera, I'll show you what I see. It looks like this. It's the arrow, you notice how it's uh, reversed, it's pointing upwards, but it's a very clear picture because that little hole in the front of the pinhole camera is doing what my pupil would normally do, making the light rays come in and the lens behind the pupil focuses them into a very clear picture. All right, that's the human eye, the pinhole camera. What happens if we make a cat's eye out of a slit hole camera? Made exactly the same way, except in the front of it, I've cut a very thin slit running up and down. That's the cat's eye, or the alligator eye. Now, if I look at that arrow with the same sort of uh, method, the slit eye gives you a surprisingly good picture. A little bit fuzzy, but it's a very distinguishable arrow. If I rotate this through 90 degrees, you can see the way the paper is moving. There, the slit is horizontal. I've still got the arrow, but it's gone out to the sides. It's a rather broad arrow, and that's the goat's eye, or the sheep's eye. So, whatever we do, if we have a slit, horizontal or vertical, or a pinhole, we get a clear picture. But there is a difference, and the difference is this. The cat, or the alligator, or the gecko is a hunter. When you're hunting something, you stalk up on it and you jump. And your vision needs to be good up and down. And that's the way the cat's pupil runs. Whereas if you're a sheep or a goat or a horse, you're a hoofed animal, the sort of animal that's usually eaten and preyed upon, you have your pupil running horizontally because your image is then all the way around. You can see what's coming to jump on you and pounce on you. And so each of them gives a decent picture, but they have a certain preference for whether they're up and down or around. Well, you can try that for yourself. Get a tin can and cardboard and lunch wrap and by making a hole in one can and a slit in another, experiment for yourself and see the way the cats and the goats and people see the world.